Hi there, Stu from Touch Sleeps here, back with a new Ableton session to go through with you all. So this is going to be one of three interactive demos that we've made for our newest pack, Distorted Visions. So the pack, when it comes out, will have uh, a whole bunch of loops, MIDI, instrument racks for Ableton Suite, uh, and Serum. Um, and these three interactive demos will show you how we create the pack, how we created the pack on a deeper level than you would normally get um, just buying one of our packs. Uh, you'll get the chance to tweak and experiment with the sounds, the structure, the MIDI, um, and hopefully get a much more fleshed out uh, experience than you would just getting the loops and one shots. For example, the one shots are going to be loaded into these Ableton sessions so that you can trigger them and move them around in context. So as a heads up, as I said, you'll you'll need Ableton 11 Suite for this to work. Um, we tried using the light and standard versions, but Suite has the full range of effects instruments um, that you're going to need to really do a good job capturing the vibe that you know I was setting out to achieve. Um, hopefully that'll become clear as we go through. Okay, so here's the intro. Pretty heavy stuff, <laughs> and not too many layers to it. Uh, most of it is this bass that we've made. Um, so this is going to be one of the instruments that you get uh, with the pack. It's a uh, wavetable, an auto filter, some hybrid reverb, which is new to Ableton 11, and the chorus ensemble, which is also new to Ableton 11, and then uh, Ableton's own compressor. The cutoff here is the main player. Um, it controls the cutoff here and here, I think. Um, so you get a really strong cutoff, you, you know, a really defined. Um, and that's what's going to give most of this its movement and character. So if we open it up and turn automation on, you can see it laid out here. But um, this being an interactive demo, you could always bypass that and um, move it around yourself. And then if you ever want to go back to what we've prepared, you can just click that there and it'll take you back. So, uh, yeah, I mean, the reverb and the chorus are giving it a lot of its character and depth, I think. But also within um, Wavetable, we've got the sub, two oscillators, uh, both playing the same octave, but slightly different wave shapes. And the sub is uh, two octaves lower than these as well. Um, but we also have Unison. I think Unison is often overlooked in Wavetable. It gives your sound so much more uh, depth and character than just, say, um, adding some vinyl crackle to it or something. Uh, you have just two voices and the amount at 19. I'm going to, hang on, let me try and play it and I'll I'll turn some of these things on and off so we can hear how the sound changes. Let's go from here as well, where things are a little bit more open. So with unison off, I mean, for one, it's very mono, but with back on, you can hear the spread. And again, with the reverb here, not providing much low end, but it's giving that top end some real space. Same with the chorus and ensemble. And then the compressor here, just uh, side chain to the perk loop. So let's listen to that. So as the, as the loop's coming in here, it's gonna be dipping that bass signal.
which is just keeping everything under control. Um, perk stones. So this is a percussion sound. Let's give it a play. So it's a percussion sound, but it's made using analog synth. And you can hear it's just triggering uh, noise, effectively. So I have oscillator two and noise turned off. Uh, oscillator one is on, and it's set just to this random mode. Uh, it's got some frequency uh, low pass on here. Uh, and then the real players are erosion and vinyl distortion. So let's play it and I'll turn those off. Again, it feels, although the sound quality hasn't changed loads, the shape of it, the spread of it does massively, especially with vinyl distortion. So pretty cool. Um, and, you know, doing it in analog versus having a sample is that y you have control over the, the frequency cut off, um, the, uh, the release, the decay of the sound itself. Um, so really, really useful, really good as a, as a preset, this chain. Um, and then we're just rolling off anything under 100 to keep it all sort of neat and tidy, give the bass lots and lots of space. And then uh, we heard this this beat here. So this is a beat from the pack um, that sounds pretty driven and it's being fed into this uh, crazy echo delay. Um, all Ableton stock. Uh, the feedback is set to 92 and you're gonna hear how that carries over this next section. And along with, I should have said, this noise bed here that plays throughout this whole demo, which is an audio file of some uh, dirty kind of crackly vinyl noise. It's gonna help feed these two sections, what one into the other. Um, but let's listen to that. It's, it's pretty overdriven. But the dry wet here is what's gonna control. Yeah, that long decay which is really cool. Um, anything over 100 and it'll never stop feeding back and actually will start to increase in volume again. So we've got it at 92 where it's just under control. Um, and that's it, that's just, just the basic uh, standard echo uh, setting when you load it in. I've just set the feedback higher and obviously automated the dry wet. And then there was this filter here that opened up at the end as well, which we can see here. And again, you know, you can modulate that yourself with this session. You can assign that to a macro or same with the dry wet here. And then we have the pad at the end, another wavetable. You see a lot of wavetable in this. Um, I really, I just think it's so versatile um, with another uh, hybrid EQ. Um, a good chance to look at the EQ settings here as well. You can EQ the shape of just the reverb, which is great. And then another EQ. Uh, let's hear that on its own. Again, heavy. <laughs> so we've got kind of a, a ramp here on the uh, on the amplitude, which gives it that kind of rushing sound, which I really love. And then on the matrix here, we've got an LFO controlling the oscillator one position, uh, the second LFO, um, which is controlling the oscillator two warp, and then LFO one is also controlling oscillator two's position here. So you could see it kind of moving left and right. Um, and then LFO2 here controlling the warp settings, which are just all character, you know, movement things. You know, they're all there just to give space and depth and character and movement. Um, this second oscillator is an octave lower as well, which really fills out that sound. And you can hear how that really complements this bass here. They just stack together and just, it's a wall of sound. Um, a slightly different unison preset, Shimmer here, set a lot higher. Uh, Drainy Cave, which we just uh, talked about with a bit more reverb. And then EQ, again, just pulling out the frequency here that might clash with the um, the bass frequency. Uh, move on to the first section that has a full beat and everything.
Ooh. Yeah. I think this pack really works being an interactive demo. I think it's something we've wanted to do for such a long time and really just needed to find the right pack to do it. And I think this one is really great. I think the sound design and the the one shots we've chosen to build drums and things are just this. They lend themselves so well to being able to get in and move filters and notes around. And um, yeah, really happy with it. So the beat, um, instead of using a drum rack, we've separated them out onto individual uh, MIDI channels. So you can, you know, really easily see the beat laid out in front of you and turn things on and off and also there are a lot of different amounts of sends being sent here so we've just got an echo on a uh, return a and uh, ableton's own reverb on return b set to full wet um and yeah i mean i'll break this beat down a little bit so we've got this sub which is just uh i've loaded into a uh a simpler here with some saturation and some compression and it's been compressed to this kick above it so that they don't uh, stack up. You know, the kick is taking, is, is more up front here and the bass is just dipping underneath it. If I play them together, you'll hear that. Yeah. Uh, yep, the kick, just a straight up dry sample, bit of EQ there. And then we've got some claps. So yeah, being sent to the, uh, Some returns there. Some snares. Layer it up with the clack. Yeah, uh, clack, clap. Gives them some more impact. This is pitched down a fourth, this snare. I think it decided that felt better there. But again, pitch it around as much as you like. Some metal percussion, just a simple metal hit sent to the same returns, keeping it all in the same sound world. Tambourine on the downbeat. And you know, you could do all sorts with this. Just by moving it up and down in pitch and sending it to these different returns. Let's stack the bass on top. So this is just, um, let me pause it. This is another loop from the pack, um, but the preset for this will be included. Uh, we've taken Serum out of this interactive demo just so that anyone who just has Ableton Suite can load it up. Um, but if you wanted to recreate this Serum sound, uh, the preset will be included, plus you're gonna have all the MIDI for all the music in this pack. So you can recreate that, but um, for the purposes of this demo, we've just got it uh, being sidechained again to that same kick as the sub, keeping it out of the way. And then let's look at these leads. Let's solo those. Again, both using Ableton. Uh, the first one, Operator, a classic. Uh, with an LFO, so this is part of the Max for Live selection, I think, that comes with Sweet. But you can see here the uh, the LFO has been mapped to the level of um, one of the oscillators, which uh, is pretty fast. You can set this to frequency or sync. We've just set it to frequency. Um, but you can, again, control all of that. It's going through a saturator, a drum bus, uh, a bass amp, more chorus and ensemble, and then a bit of EQ. So let's just hear that maybe by itself, I've soloed it. You can really hear that LFO working here. So yeah, all sorts you can do with this. Saturator as well. Drum bus. So powerful. And then this uh, 
the amp set to a bass setting. And again, chorus and ensemble, giving it that sort of width and character and color more than anything. Layered up with this synth, back to wavetable. So we can hear the uh, auto filter here. Opening and closing that sound. Some EQ just to keep the low end under control and the tops. Um, and again, uh, different LFOs controlling the glide, the oscillator position, all of this here to jump into and play around with. Um, and then on the group here, so uh, these are um, grouped down. So you have the beat overall, but this is the beat for this section. Uh, that just has a glue compressor on, keeping everything in check. Uh, bass serum side-chained, and the leads here also side-chained with uh, some more, more precise notch EQ. heavy stuff again. So again, the synths here, you'll have the presets for these. They'll be labeled correctly so you can find them really quick. You're going to have the MIDI as well, but for this demo, we're just using the audio to keep it simple. Um, being sent to a preset called Analog Collapse for Echo. Um, and then this synth here is just uh, EQ'd a little bit. Um, and then the beat, <laughs> knee rattle. <laughs> so this is a group within a group within a group, which might seem excessive, but it's a great way of controlling things without having an absolute ton of sends or, you know, you never used to be able to do this in old Ableton, I think Ableton 9, maybe even 10, I can't remember. You, you couldn't do groups within groups and your session would just be all over the place, but now you can collapse it down into just this, which is amazing. But this kick is built, well, this whole kit is built of so many little layers, but especially the kick. So let's just go through those first. So this kick took me a while to build, but I this 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 section for those of you who listen to a lot of lawn, it it was really heavily inspired by the track Acid Rain. I spent ages trying to just firstly create the sounds using all the more expensive Altoria plugins and things, and um, I got pretty close, but I'm you're never going to get it quite right. And then uh, Serum ended being ended up being the synth that I got the closest with, just using one synth Serum, which you can get on a free trial. Um, and then, the, but the beat took the longest. I really wanted to get that rich, deep kick sound. Um, so it starts off with this kick punch sound. Pretty dry, kind of clipped, pitched down a seventh. Uh, I've tried to brighten up the top end of it here to give it some presence. And it's running through drum bus, which is just giving it a bit more drive. Um, and I've rolled off some of the uh, very top end. And then that's layered up with this sub loads of attack on that i've had to roll some off even but that'll be tuned to this um the key of this section but you can you know transpose that up and down to whatever uh key you're in just uh, whap a tuner on the end there saturated more drum bus and then there's this acoustic layer which is giving it that big roomy sound pitch down a fifth uh some fade out here just to help it um you know, to make sure there isn't any clicking at the end of the sample or anything. And then that's been sort of rolled off to fit with the other two. So all together. Oh, and there's also this uh, kick reverb. Um, which again, gives it another texture, puts it in a slightly uh, different space. Uh, but yeah, lay it all up together. I think it sounds pretty massive. Um, Pretty great. Cabasa here. Again, same uh, 
room and echo speed on the returns. Now our first instance of drum rack here, clicker and a click fragment, running through hybrid reverb, saturation, drum bus, all the same distortion tools. <clears throat> There's an auto pan there not doing anything, but it's there if you want to move stuff around, and a compressor as well if you wanted to compress anything any harder. Just playing a rhythm, quite a lot of low end in that click, but again, texture. So all in all, you've got your beat. And your synths. And all of that's going through one final compressor just to keep everything under control. Beat four, let's see what this one's like. Pretty cool. So the synth group, we've got two um, layers to this synth group. So let me just solo the, the group and then we'll listen to each layer. So they're running through arpeggiator. Um, this is a poly 60 saw preset within the wavetable. And sort of similar things here, we've got an LFO controlling um, the oscillator one position, which we can see moving around here. Oscillator two isn't. But it's giving that slight tom rule movement. Uh, not GQ'd again, in case anything's sticking out. So that's the one, that's the, uh, the the right side and the left side. Slightly different sound, slightly smaller. You see the synth decay being automated here. Again, just gives everything a little bit of a character and shape and you're not hearing the same thing over and over again and you know interactive demo you can get in there you can move the the attack the all of the uh the shape of the signal around um either side and and sort of shape it to your taste and then we've got this synth up uh, loop from the packs so that's another serum one um which sounds like this you'll be able to get into there, load the preset in, load the MIDI in, play around with that. And then uh, some bass using analog again. A lot of that crunch coming from vinyl distortion. But even without it, it's got a lot of uh, weight to it. Build to cut off there. Um, drive, com compression, delay, all stuff that can be uh, mapped to macros. The frequency and resonance there. Uh, compression to keep it under control, and again, some uh, sidechain to the kick to stop them uh, building up too much. And we have the beat. Slow disco, it's accurate. So, kick. Dry, lots of EQ here, bringing out all of the uh, the noise at the top there and controlling some of the mud. And uh, claps. Kind of got that. They're not being sent to a, uh, a different reverb. The reverb sound is part of uh, the clap sample itself. And I did that so that you get that kind of 80s sort of uh, gated reverb effect where it just cuts off. Really love that. Keeping the tops under control. Some more saturation, some more drum bus. Uh, really two of Ableton's best um, outside of just amplifiers and, you know, classic sounding uh, distortion and fuzz. Two of the best um, distortion shaping plugins that Ableton has, I think, saturator and drum bus. I mean, drum bus especially with the transient shaper. Uh, some more claps on top of that. So these are being sent to the... Uh, the group's reverb and delay, keeping it all in one space. And hats. Uh, 
pretty simple. Taking out some of the very, very low gunk, which you wouldn't hear, but keeping some of that mud in there because it's all, all part of it. And then a perk loop from the pack, just to add some texture. And that's beat four. And then uh, beat five, which can burn through these because you'll have your hands on this. You'll be able to go through it yourselves. Wicked. So glue compressor on the beat. Uh, more of the same here. So, well, let me, let me just let's just hear the whole beat. This is a sample that I wrote and then I re-chopped up because I didn't like the rhythm of it or something originally. Um, but that's pretty cool. You know, you can move the MIDI around if you don't like, um, you know, part of the rhythm. We can move things around. Um, you know make it fit whatever you know whatever you want it to do like that more choppy or whatever um, drums main drums kick so main sound like this just the tops really sometimes it's nice to keep uh, I find it's nice to have the, the kick drum on a separate MIDI channel just so you have an extra layer of control over it but these are running through some erosion that gives that kind of papery, distorted sound. And some reverb, and again some EQ, and the kick. Really dry, really, um, uh, really enveloped. Like you can hear it cutting off at the end. I just wanted that short, sharp impact. I mean, there's so many uh, synth layers on this one. I didn't want it to get too crazy. So talking of synths. Uh, we have wavetable on the left. Kind of more of like um, an FM sound. But that's coming again from distortion. Saturator, boost and crunch, which is another preset of the, uh, the amp in Ableton. Final distortion and more erosion, this wide and dirty setting. You know what, let's turn all of that off. And let's just turn them on one at a time so we have a quick, a quick idea of how we changed the sound. So initially, small, plucky, some uh, some unison again on the noise setting. So it has this kind of squelchy sound. Just one oscillator, um, a lot of um, attack to it as well. So we rolled off some low end that we didn't like. Saturation, beefs the signal up a little. Boost and crunch, the big one. Set to boost mode. Um, and that's giving it, you know, this kind of harshness. So we've had to take the, all the treble out. Because that's too much. Vinyl distortion. Kind of um, sort of softens the sound again. And then this wide and dirty preset, which is giving it just this. This kind of crunch down at the bottom. Another really great chain, really useful. Uh, underneath that, another wavetable. So this is an octave lower. Um, same kind of uh, enveloping on the, uh, the oscillator here. LFO controlling that. Oscillator pitch, warp amount. We've rolled the top off. Saturation, uh, a different setting, key crunch. You can hear the difference that's making. Almost sounds like an entirely different synth. Uh, vinyl crackle and more of the uh, the uh, erosion. Another serum sound that we've just got as the audio here. But, oh wow, I mean it gives it so much shape. A 
and then these uh, really high frequency um, wavetable notes um, that have uh, that are going through the same key crunch preset and um, a sidechain compressor, just because they're pretty wild. You don't want those to get too out of control. Um, and uh, yeah, I think that's that one. So we've spread the synths, uh, you know, as you can see, there's one left, one right, and they're kind of in the middle octave. We've got this one, which is a, a lower octave, and then this, which is a higher octave. So we've spread the um, the information across uh, three octaves. So nothing is getting too um, stacked in one frequency. It's spread across and you get that kind of wall of sound effect, um, which is key, I think, to this genre. And then the outro. Uh, so let's have a listen to that. Ooh. And then it repeats. Man, I love this. These three stacked up on each other sound just crazy. So let's listen to the feedback first. Sort of a bow sound. This is one of Ableton's presets. We've run it through uh, the auto filter set on a band pass. So we're cutting out the top and bottom. Um, some pretty hardcore um, vinyl distortion and some auto filter, which is for the most part cutting the top off until the end here. That's being sent to reverb, delay. Sounds great. And then some, uh, this is uh, from a pack that you get within Ableton. Sorry, let me stop that. So within Ableton, you when you buy Ableton Suite, you can go onto the uh, Ableton website and they'll have a bunch of instruments and packs that you can download within Ableton's own browser. Um, and this is one of them, some these kind of choral vo vocals that you can get. Um, we've saved, collect all and saved this session, so you you should have them when you install it, but you may also need to download them. They're just part of Ableton's uh, collection. Um, I don't think you have to pay for them if you have Ableton Suite. Um, so you'll have the preset here ready to go. And then we've just added, you know, uh, EQ and reverb at the end, and they're being sent to our main group reverb again. And then this brass sound here. So that's analog again. Two oscillators, detuned slightly, slightly different um, filters. But this auto filter here, you can hear it's really doing all the work, going through a really massive uh, reverb preset. bit of resonance here which you can really push get that kind of uh, you can get that really moog sound to the filter um, massive I think that sounds great those three are when I when I found this stack working I was just so pleased um, some uh, you can hear here where it's being sent harder to the um, the echo near the end probably just to help carry the outro and that's it that's the demo uh, there are a couple of instruments here we've included, just a couple of, um, so you can just play in over the top at any point if you wanted to. So that's just a sample uh, that we recorded from some hardware um, in a sim uh, with a, a compressor on it um, that you can just play over the top and same with this pitchy boom one. Kind of Kind of gross sounding, but again, this is an example of um, the presets that you'll get with the pack, just ready to go, just drop them in, play them over the top. Um, so there are just two there, and uh, and that's it. So hopefully that's uh, helpful for this first uh, interactive demo. Um, I really can't wait for you to get your hands on it and just start playing around with it. Um, it as I said, it's something we've wanted to do for a really long time. I'm really glad that we're able to do it now with this pack. Um, and I'll be back with the second interactive demo in a second video.
or we'll go through some of the different techniques in that one. And uh, and then, yeah, hope you guys enjoy it. Cheers. <laughs>